Thank you for talking with us today. We're here at Second Chance. What is Second Chance? Second Chance is a nonprofit uh, that was founded here in Baltimore uh, and opened our doors back in 2003. Um, we have a threefold mission to retrain people with barriers to employment, reclaim uh, architectural salvage materials and components, and furniture and fixtures and appliances that would otherwise go to the landfill, and renew them to useful life. Yeah, walking around, you can't imagine the weird stuff you see. You run into, there's a three-wheeled car out there and it's just like stuff I've never seen before and stuff I've seen. And even in rooms like this, it almost looks like a gallery piece in here. And even if somebody doesn't you know, wanna come and get a door to put in their house, they could come and get artwork or there's a piano over there, just such strange stuff. Well, there's a little bit of um, Baltimore history in this room. Those letters, I've been told are from the old Chesapeake House restaurant. Uh, up on uh, Charles Street, so uh, you're absolutely right. Now, where do you get all this from? Many different places. Okay. As I said, um, you know, when they redid the restaurant, uh, the the uh, new owners had given us those letters um, to to bring back here. Uh, you'll notice the materials around here. Those are all, those all come from deconstruction projects okay. that we have done. And I'd like, if that's okay, to take you um, just a moment to describe what deconstruction is. Not many people are okay. familiar with the term. Um, a deconstruction project is a, for a, when a house is scheduled for demolition, the owner decides that they really want to have the materials and components salvaged instead of just throwing them into the landfill. Okay. We will send a crew out and take all of the reusable pieces and parts of the house and actually bring them back here to Baltimore to sell in the warehouse. And so what you're seeing on the walls uh, and in the displays are roof tiles and flooring and all sorts of really wonderful materials that would otherwise be in a dump somewhere. Which, in what you're doing here, reduces waste. Exactly, exactly. We, we calculated that last year alone, we saved two and a half million cubic feet from the landfill. That, that is incredible. That is amazing. Um, now, we're here today for the fundraiser for the Robert Long House. Why open your doors to this fundraiser? Well, when we moved to this facility back in 2012, it opened up all sorts of new possibilities to us that were very exciting, including being a, a community center. Okay. And so we will occasionally open our doors to our fellow nonprofits, uh, like the Historical the Preservation Society. Uh, to benefit the broader community. Excellent. Um, do we have any other questions? Yeah. Where were you located before this? Great question. Um, Second Chance opened our doors in 2003 in a single warehouse over on Warner Street where the where the uh, casino parking garage is currently located. Okay. And um, it slowly expanded as it became more successful into another three warehouses. Then in 2011, the city exercised eminent domain to make way for the casino. And we were very, very fortunate to, that this location um, became available. Thanks, uh, and thanks to relocation funding and the support of the ABLE Foundation, uh, we were able to move into this facility and, like mm. I said, make it, make it available not only to fulfill our mission, but I, to support the community. I think I was one of the first people that came to see you when you were at the other location. I was one of the first people that came on there, and I was like, I wonder what this is. And I was like going through some blocks and stuff, and I figured some stuff out. <laughs> and I, I heard it's. I heard it was a real treasure hunt back back then because it was a much smaller facility, oh, this is unbelievable. and so it was just stuffed full of stuff. This this is a great place for us because people can actually see what we've got 
which is wonderful. Exactly, exactly. Just, uh, we found, we went outside and we found, finally found what we were looking for. But here, this is marvelous, it really is. I'm, 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 this is impressive. Yeah, we, we, piano. we're thrilled to it have goes, it. It goes down a few more thousand this month. <laughs> Now, <laughs> good. Send them our way. <laughs> now, how big is this new facility? This, this, well, new is put new, new in, in quotes. Terms. It's actually a mid 20th century industrial facility. Uh, we have we bought the entire 300,000 square foot facility back when the market was in the trough of okay. the market. Thank goodness, it's now improved a lot. Um, we rent about 60,000 square feet currently, and our retail operation occupies about 200,000. Okay. And then we use another 40,000 uh, as kind of a receiving and materials processing center. And do you have to do any sort of like restoration on any of the? Oh yeah, okay. everything you see here in this in this this is our repurposing showcase everything okay. you see here was installed by second chance okay. okay um and much of what you see outside this is the vision for the entire facility but as you can imagine being a nonprofit, it's very challenging right. to you know find the funding to invest in in this kind of thing so it's it's moving slowly but surely well I urge anybody who's like redoing their house or just need a project to come down here because you can go to like Home Depot and get wood, but that wood doesn't have personality. Down here, you can get something with personality, which is so much better. Oh. So, well, thank you. We feel yeah. the same way. Thank you. Wow. All right. Cool. Thank you for speaking with us today. Could you introduce yourself and tell us why we're talking to you? Well, uh, my name is David Gleason and um, I have been involved with the Preservation Society for, for a while. I am now um, chairman of the 250th anniversary uh, committee for the construction of the Robert Longhouse in Fells Point. Okay. Um, over the years, I've been a, uh, in, uh, I'm a historian, I'm, a historic, uh, we, I'm an architect, we do a lot of historic preservation work, so this is something that I have a great interest in. Now, this event, the 250th anniversary of the Robert Longhouse, why is it so important? Well, the Robert Longhouse is really a, a, a mirror that reflects the history of, of Fells Point and, and Baltimore City and sort of the country in general. It starts off as an 18th century seaport. It rises to prominence. It becomes the port of, of Baltimore for the state of Maryland, for the mid-Atlantic regions. It's very important. And then as times change, it, it becomes a manufacturing center. It becomes a center for immigration. It becomes a center for um, uh, uh, diverse uh, neighborhoods, uh, and, and it really pictures the growth of America. And that's why it's important, because it, 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 it's a living uh, neighborhood where all these things are still together. Wow. So it has seen the rise of the country, I guess you could say. Right. Well, when the, when the house was constructed in 1765, Fells Point basically uh, was a few, a few dwellings and maybe right. one or two wharfs. By the beginning of the 19th century, it had grown to you know a, a um, settlement of about 3,000 people. It was a very busy port. There was shipbuilding. There was many, uh, related maritime activities. So it really became very quickly a hub for the uh, maritime industries in in uh, Baltimore. You said 1765 is when the Robert Longhouse was built. Right. Which means it's older than this country. It is. Well, it's a colonial dwelling. <laughs> I mean, and it reflects the um, architecture of the colonies. It reflects the aspirations of the colonies. It, it, it really represents also sort of the change of um, the tone of the country up to, you know, the Revolutionary War. Uh, interest, uh, moneyed interests were basically related to the land. The, the landed aristocracy, but with the beginning of the revolution, things began to change, and the middle class began to rise. I mean, there was a great interest in commerce, okay, in mercantile industries rather than farming 
and the old um, agricultural um, aesthetics of you know the, the 18th century. So it, it really marks the difference, the change, where America becomes you know, a, a manufacturing center, a center for commerce, a center for entrepreneurs, and the Robert Longhouse was built by an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, a young man who came from uh, Pennsylvania, looking to make a make money, make his fortune, and he had uh, he began to construct houses. He began to import, export. He had warehouses. He had a number of business business interests okay. that allowed him to retire basically to the to Baltimore County by 18 by 1785. Okay. So he was American success story. And is that is the house named after him or is the house named after somebody else? The house is named after him as okay. the, as the as the builder. As the builder. Okay. Right. Now 250 years is a very long time in this country for a a house. I mean it's not like a government building. It's just a house to have lasted, I mean, we tear our history down. How did it survive 250 years? Well, um, it, it survived because it was, um, it had value. Okay. And initially it was, uh, the, the value was as a residence close to the, to the seaport. Yeah. As time went by, it, it became um, residential, but then rooms were, were rented out and it, offices were created in it. Okay. Um, but as the economies of Fells Point decline, the value of the house also declined. Okay. By 1960, the house was fairly, you know, was used more or less as a warehouse. Okay. By the time the Preservation Society bought it in the 1970s, it was basically vacant. Wow. So it was, and if it hadn't been for the interest, the rise of the interest in, in preservation in this country, probably the house would have disappeared. Okay. Okay. And it's a very special house in that, as I said, it's the last or the only surviving colonial residence in Fells Point. Wow. So it makes it, you know, so its significance is, is very important. So if somebody comes to Fells Point, this is essentially the oldest building this, in this, Fells Point. This is the oldest building in Fells Point. Okay. Is it the oldest building in Baltimore? Well, it, it was, interestingly enough, it was constructed in 1765, but... Um, Outside of town, outside of the town limits, the, the Carroll Mansion was being constructed as a plantation okay. house. Okay. This is in um, over in Washington Boulevard. Okay. And the uh, Carroll, Mount Clare. Okay. And Mount Clare was the country seat of uh, a Daniel Ca Carroll, who was a member of the Carroll family, wealthy. He was a, he was a, um, a lawyer. Okay. Uh, and planned, uh, he had, uh, you know, it was a large plantation. Uh, there were gardens, there were additions to the house. I mean, it's quite an establishment that he had constructed. So if you want to contrast that with, with Robert Long, this house is 28 by 28. Yeah, it's not so, a very big house. It's not a very big house, very modest, but at the time it really represented a gigantic leap in the sort of the economies of the middle class, wow. the rising middle class. <laughs> so, so that's why it's important because it, it, it gives us a window into the beginnings of sort of where America went. Excellent. The idea of, of someone can come and and through his own efforts, not the efforts of his family or you know the, the general class in which he's in, but of his own interest and he can make money and he becomes, you know, well to do and, and makes a mark on society. Wow. Now we are at this two hundred and fiftieth anniversary well, it's a fundraiser. Right. Why are we still fundraising if the house is there and it's bought? Why, what's the importance of this fundraiser? Well, the importance is that this, the uh, reconstruction and renovations of the house were, 40, were about 35 years ago. Okay. Like any, any building, maintenance is required. Right. And so the society wants to upgrade a lot of the systems in the house. Okay. Do maintenance that has been sort of postponed for a while, and sort of bring it into a much you know, into a more um, current you know condition. Okay. So so you know so every so as it's used you know people will see that the uh, everything has been uh, maintained as it should be, and it really is a um, you know a good um, a benefit to have this in Fells Point. So anybody who wants to keep the history alive in Fells Point should think about helping out and donating some money. 
Well, they should because it's a part of their community. I mean, it it is, as I said, a part, a living part of Fells Point. It's not a museum where it's it's tucked away in the back and nobody sees it, but it's right on the street, yep. part of the neighborhood. People come and go, and you know, it's you know something as a you know as as a community, it it should have some you know interest by the community in it. Excellent. Thank you for talking with us, and look forward to enjoying the event. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, right, enjoy the event, and hopefully you'll get to see the Robert Longhouse. Yeah. So why are you here at this event? Why do you care about the Robert Longhouse? Well, for one thing, I'm president of the Preservation Society, <laughs> and that's part of my job and my responsibility. And the Robert Longhouse needs rehabilitation. Okay. It was uh, damaged in the hurricane thing, and then the flooding, and. We need to preserve that building, and if we don't do something about raising funds and working with the state to get a bond to cover costs, we're not going to be able to do it. Okay, and could you hold that up just a little yes. bit high? Yes. Yeah. But why is the Robert Longhouse important? Well, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, residents in Baltimore City. Okay. And uh, it has a meaning for that reason, I think. It, part of the history of this community. It's part of the history of, of Baltimore and of Maryland. Excellent. Yeah. So what are the details of what you're going to use the money that we raise or that you raised today on? Well, the money, we've already spent money that we're hoping to get <laughs> on the heating and cooling system. The, the building had no heating and cooling system. Okay. It went down last winter. And we also need to repair the roof. We need to repair other parts of the building. And we don't want that building to fall down. It's too important to the history of this community. Excellent. So what does the Robert Longhouse mean to you? Why are you at this event? Um, actually, I live about a block away from the Robert Longhouse. It's on Ann Street. You cross Thames, and I'm uh, five houses down on uh, Fell. And I'm really just proud it's in my neighborhood. It's the oldest, I believe, residence in, in Baltimore. It's a, it's a piece of history, and it's just it's just wonderful. It's it's the Robert Longhouse is, is right in my neighborhood, half a block away, a block away, and I'm just proud to live next to it. It's this piece of history, this living piece of Baltimore history. It's part of what makes Fells Point great. Great. I mean, people come to Fells Point, they think, oh, there are nice bars with burgers and stuff. <laughs> There's history in Fells Point. Fells Fells Point is history. Fells Point is history, is living history, and um, I'm proud to live there. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for talking with us. You're welcome. Why you have a mandolin? I do. What are you doing here today? <laughs> well, we're providing background music in this great place. It sounds wonderful in the corner, and we're the only, the very unique group of uh, musicians in North America who uh, teach children how to um, perform classical music on mandolins, which is a lost art in America. And with the advent of the Gibson um, um, flatback mandolin mm -hmm. when Mil Bill Ron Monroe raced through the country making bluegrass popular. But of course in Europe and in, in um, Asia, um, classical music in, on mandolins is, is very much sought after. You can graduate from conservatories with degrees. So we're on our way in, in, <laughs> Ma in America. And we have three branches. We have one in Seattle, Washington and one in Saskatchewan, Canada, okay. and two more groups coming up. Wow, and so. what's what's the name of your group? Our group is Mando for Kids. Mando for Kids. And it started in Baltimore. And how long ago did it start? 2010. Wow, so. that's very cool. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to have these kids there, they're troopers. So much fun playing with them. And now, why donate your time to this event? Well, because we live down the street from the Robert Longhouse, which part of this, these funds, I think, are to seek a new roof and um, it seemed like a wonderful combination. The Robert Longhouse is mid-1700s. We play a lot of Baroque music, which is mid-1700s. So it's a good uh, pairing good up. Are you, are you make sure, did you make sure that you were uh, picking music from that time period for this? Well, you, you'll see, he, we have the core of what we do, but then we're branching out. We've done some Italian, which of course the traditional instrument is the mandolin. And we'll play some Irish and uh, some other things, but the core of, of what these kids do is Baroque music. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Yeah.